Mute your mics. Well, blessings to you all, and thank you for joining us for Spotlight on Music. We praise God for this wonderful privilege that we have tonight. And tonight is a very, 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 very special night for all of us that have logged on. Uh, my brothers, my friends, my nephews, my son, I tell you, we're going to have a good time tonight. This is what I need you to do. Everybody that's logging on. Uh, on Bishop Andre Sonny Woods page, Bishop Andre S. Woods page. Listen, I want you to like and share. I want you to start your watch parties. I want you to get on the phone, call everybody, text them, send smoke signals, tell them that we are now live on Bishop Andre S. Woods page. And we're going to have the conversation that a lot of you have been waiting on. We're gonna talk about bridging the gap, especially the generational gap. And we've got some dynamic, wonderful musicians, generation of musicians on with us tonight. And you're gonna be blessed by the dialogue that we're going to share uh, on this evening. So again, do that for us, like and share. Start your watch parties and share with us tonight. And I want to welcome our panel, our guests tonight, my brother, Dr. Gregory Troy, and then my brother, Pastor Rudolph Stanfield, and then, of course, Byron Stanfield, and then, of course, Ru uh, Roosevelt Hampton. He trying to look special tonight with this hat on. Uh, and <laughs> then, of course, the one and only Christopher Jones. Welcome, guys, to Spotlight on Music. It's so good to see you all. Greg, you got to unmute your mic. Yes, it's a blessing. Good to see you all. Likewise. 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 Hey, hey. Listen, here. listen. I'm going to start with the comment that Chris made on a post. He said, it's been coming for a long time. <laughs> you know, we've been talking about how to get together, especially uh, myself, Pastor Stanfield, Dr. Troy, uh, we've had, uh, I would say, musically and ministry-wise, the Lord has blessed us. We've had a good run in music, in ministry. Uh, we've done some things, and uh, we thank God for the history and the, the wonderful things that we've been able to accomplish with our music and ministry careers. The Lord has been so kind to us. Um, I'm going to allow, I'm going to start with, uh, the eldest of us all, Dr. Yeah. Gregory Troy. I just want you to give us a synopsis, my brother, how you got started in your music. Take us all the way back to the Gregory Troy Ensemble. <laughs> well, hello to everybody. Well, it started at a church called First Church of God in Christ and Holiness, Blessed Anderson Troy. And I told people um, I was a drug baby because I was drugged to church. I had no, other, no choice. We lived over the church. We were the caretakers of the, the storefront church of Bobian and Milwaukee. And my mother, my brother, Vincent, mm -hmm. um, my late sister, Jessica, um, <laughs> we had to come downstairs, clean the church up, and uh, couldn't stay at home. And so uh, there were some musicians at the church. And they kept quitting the church. And Blessed Troy said, I want to stay alive. And so in, in comes the musicians 
and Dorothy and Kenny start playing and me being close to them and the except, you know, then that's how I got started because I wanted to follow them. And he uh, said, he prayed over my hands and then we was using the upright piano at that time, which they don't have anymore. I liked it back in the day. He said, I'm gonna make my own musicians. And um, from there, he began to pray um, over my hands and told me to sit there. And when I heard, whatever I heard, I began to emulate that on the piano and began to just continue to play and uh, so forth. And thus that begins my career in music. I got started. Um, at that time, he, you know, if Rudy, uh, Rudy, uh, Pat Stephan knew uh, my father and his father were good friends. And if Leslie Troy, and so the Bishop Woods, uh, what Edison Troy said, whatever he prophesied, he it came to pass. And um, he prophesied and prayed over us, and we start going around in different churches. And then we would stop at Neapolitan on Sunday night. Bishop would let us play the organ, myself and Kenny. Then we go Reverend Boyd, and we were just um, coming around. And um, that thus that started my musical career. Then I was hanging around with uh, Miss Elma Hendricks Parham, CYE, Community from Zama. I was taking music lessons from her at her store, Elmas and Carl's House of Music up on Hoyne. And I had Beverly Glenn chime in, give me little lessons. Um, Uncle Dorgan Needham. Uh, and then at that time, uh, CYE was popular. You had Dorgan Needham, Beverly Glenn, you had the late Ralph Long, but Dr. Like Ralph Long. And um, I just started playing. For different people and uh, just start playing uh, for different people. The very first church job, besides first church of God in Christ and holiness, I think the first job I got was New Salem with the late Nathan Wolford Caldwell, uh, J. Allen Caldwell's brother, New Salem on Du Bois, Illinois. And my first salary was $15 a Sunday. I did a rehearsal. Then I did all all day Sunday and then we come back and do the night broadcast. Fifteen dollars a Sunday that was my salary from New Salem, and from there I met um, your lady Louise that became my choir director. I went to um, St. Alban and Forest. It was a church called New Hope Baptist Church, Reverend Joseph Lowe, and from there. I stayed with them and then um, Brother New Hope decided to move from the little storefront church and build a church and stand hey, today. Greg, you're not in the camera. Get in the camera, man. Oh, so I, I know you ain't camera shy. You know, <laughs> um, from there, they built a church on Van Dyke and Palmer. And that's when all of um, the music career really started then. Um, you had the Silver Hearts, which is a quartet group. That was my first recording. I found the Lord. And um, things didn't just didn't go right. Uh, it was a little tug of war of power. Uh, Pastor Joseph Lowe uh, had a, a stroke in the old Mount Zion church across the street from where the new church is at, the original building. And he had a stroke in the pulpit. And when he became ill, he never recovered. His brother, David became pastor. And me being close to Reverend Joseph Lowe, he would come pick me up. And this is, you know, supposed to be in a Sunday school. I was driving his car, parking, going up and down and back and forth outside. But um, things didn't go right for us. And they wanted to um, move, remove me as the musician and bring in Isaac Prince. Back in the day, Professor Isaac Prince played at Mount Zion. He was a hot ticket back then. Donnell said he was a ticket back in the day. And I, and so that's when the, the, um, the rum would come to get rid of me and pull me off and bring King in. And so when I decided to leave, late Odie Anderson stepped in and they just like kicked us out and, of New Hope. And we, um, she said, what are we going to do? And I brought up by the choir and that's how the group of choice begin to come in, in existence because was all together at New Hope. 
And um, we went to New Testament Church over there on front, and that, that was our rehearsal. And from there, birthed the Gregory Choice, and that's we sang all over the city. Uh, um, Louise William came, I, I, she followed me from New Salem. She followed me to New Hope. And then she followed me into being my choir director. And there's a bunch of young, um, young singers we love to sing. And that's how um, I became to get into the music field for the Gregory Shores, along with uh, Larry Robinson, Council Correa, Bishop Roger Edwards at Northeast Community Choir. And then we had that song battle at Galash, Galatian Church with H.W. Burroughs. And everybody knew how Reverend Burroughs were. And so it'd be the Voices of Heaven, Donald Vales, Corlears, and the Gregory Choirs. And we do that, I think every first Sunday, we would do that play, you know, do uh, a program. So um, that's how the Gregory Choirs started. And then when I um, finally left and went to St. James, the majority of the Gregory Choirs followed me to St. James. And the rest is history. Reverend Nix was our, I was, did our consecration for the Gregory Choirs. And it bloomed from there. That's how we started. Man, that's 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 history. That's history. Thank God for that. And uh, uh, well, let's go back. Cause we're gonna all go back and 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 reminisce a little bit while the fellas getting their stories together. Y'all getting it together? <laughs> Roosevelt, Chris, and Byron. I know they got some stories. <laughs> Pastor Stanfield, my brother. Yes, man. Sir. Just catch us up on how the Lord blessed you. Now, I'm going to tell you, I, I remember just the two of us, your mom and dad, yes, singing yes. at Pratt Tabernacle, Doc. And uh, you was just starting out. It pick us up from there. Uh, absolutely. Uh, my mom and dad, uh, the late Bishop Rudolph Stanfield Sr. and Lady, Reverend Lady, Marvin Stanfield. Yes, my yes, yes. They were a singing duo and team, um, initially uh, they would go out and sing at Holy Cross Baptist Church. Uh, right, right. Most of you all remember the uh, late Bertha Harris. Yes. She would have WCHB family nights. Right, right. And she would have those particular programs. And uh, at first, uh, my mom and dad would carry me with them. And uh, first, Initially, they would have uh, Dr. Troy Gregory would play. And they said, well, just sit and listen. Just sit and listen. He would accompany them. And eventually, I got a little better. And they started allowing me to accompany them at uh, age 14. Uh, prior to that, uh, I won't go into real detail. My grandmother, uh, the late Macy, Lee Cranfield was a musician and singer, and she started me playing around the age of three, setting me on her knee on an upright piano, and yes. uh, she also uh, taught my dad, Bishop Stanfield. He played guitar and piano. Uh, initially, my grandmother's auntie played. She taught her, and, uh, and it kind of went on and went on as a kid. Growing up, they were all connected to a church called the Church uh, of Our Prayer under the mm -hmm. late Dr. James L. Lofton. Yes, sir. At that time, uh, his minister of music was Reverend Charles Ashley Craig II, the yeah. father of the Craig brothers. Uh, and uh, at that time, also Reverend James Cleveland had came in from Chicago, and he was affiliated with that church. Uh, eventually when Reverend Craig started his ministry, Reverend Cleveland went with him and became his minister of music at our faith prayer tabernacle. Yes, sir. But through that transition, my father's first church musician was Reverend Benny Johnson. Mm -hmm. And uh, I uh, wanted to play like Reverend Benny Johnson. So uh, at seven years old, I became our church's pianist and by the time I turned 12 I became the church organist and so the history evolved from that uh, later on hooking up with the late Reverend James Marks and the Voices of Heaven and right. he, 
uh, asked my parents, could I play for his community choir at the age of 14? Uh, little did I know within a year after that, uh, I had the opportunity to do my first recording with him uh, and the Voices of Heaven and uh, history just kept evolving. And then uh, I met Bishop Woods through uh, Reverend James Marks and what we call the rock gospel. Right. Which was uh, Neapolitan, Bishop Woods. Uh, it was uh, Prayer Tabernacle, the Voices of Tabernacle, Gregory Troy, Ensemble, Larry Robinson, Casa Corral, Lucille Lemon, yeah. Gospel Chorus. Uh, you had John Eberhardt and the Eberhardt Singers. And it just kind of went on with different choirs we would gather. We would have rehearsals at the different church. I still remember Bishop Andre Woods' arrangement of We Shall Overcome. He right. taught it to us. We sung it at New Bethel. We didn't get through rehearsal good. And, and by the time we got to New Bethel to sing it that night, it was just, it was absolutely incredible. But after all of that, things just kept evolving later on. Uh, at that time, that's actually where I met Minister Thomas Whitfield. And then uh, we started working together. Uh, interesting enough, uh, it kind of prepared uh, me in a situation where he had hands-on involvement with the late uh, great Herbert Picard. Yes. Who was a, a tremendous musician along with Alpha Bolton. They played for the recordings with Reverend James Cleveland that he did with the Voices of Tabernacle, Mighty Voices of Tabernacle. Growing up as a kid, this is all I heard, these records in my home. Little did I know it would prepare me later on, my relationship with Minister Whitfield, all of the things that I listened to uh, growing up, along with Reverend Charles Nix and you know, it all kind of prepared us for our relationships together. Of course, later on, uh, I got a chance to work with Reverend Cleveland, travel with him, got a chance to work with the Craig brothers, uh, not to mention just Bishop Woods and Dr. Choi and other artists and musicians that actually inspired me. I don't, I don't even know if my brothers know that you all were inspiring me as a 13 and 14 year old. Um, uh, when I say that is we're probably all about six years apart with the exception of Dr. Troy, we may be seven. Uh, <laughs> make a long story short, God is blessed. Uh, and uh, I left Detroit in 1981, uh, actually, uh, the year my mom made her transition, this coming August 16th, this Sunday, will be a 40 years from the time she made her transition. Yes. And after that year, I just wanted to do something different. I moved to Flint uh, later on, having the opportunity to do different things and work with such artists as Vanessa Bell Armstrong and Keith Pringle. And eventually I got a call from Ed Smith that was asking me, you know, he said, man, where you been? I've been trying to reach you for two weeks. And I said, well, I'm here in Flint. And he said, Aretha is trying to get in touch with you. And I said, Aretha who? He, he said, uh, Aretha Franklin. I said, okay, really? And, but she, sure enough, she called and then we started working together. And that whole dynamic happened through Reverend James Cleet. Uh, with that connection and things just kind of went on in terms of producing, starting my own choir, New Revelation Singers. I love y'all, those of you that's watching. Yes, and, yes. Uh, Working with them, also producing them along with my brother, Dr. Michael Fletcher, working with him, brother Kenneth Martin, all of the sound of gospel artists yes uh that we had opportunities bishop as you know to work with one another and interact with one another and uh you know god has just afforded us opportunities i'm yet producing i'm working on something now 
uh, in terms of uh, a legacy piece with uh, uh, my friend, Dr. James Brown, and uh, we're doing a legacy piece uh, to our friend and our mentor, uh, Dr. Thomas Anthony Whitfield. And yes. so we, we're still involved in things. And of course, uh, when I go out and produce and I do different things, I take my son. I only have one son. I don't care what nobody <laughs> tell you. It's one son, begotten son, and that's Darnell, Darnell Stanfield <laughs> Senior. <laughs> Amen. And, and uh, he, he'll tell his story. Uh, but I love that young man. And, you know, and then I have my daughters and, you know, they're involved in music and they sing. And uh, I think at age of five, Byron had his first lesson at the age of five. And I taught him the chords to perfect peace at the age of five. That was his first lesson from his dad. And, but he took everything and I'm so blessed and honored to have him as a son. And when I look at my nephew, Chris and Roosevelt and just others, I was thinking the other day, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna even make this short about our friend, uh, Bishop Roger Edwards and thinking about yes. Red, you know, yeah. thinking about my cousin the late Reverend James Moore. And then when you hear his yes. son, Armel, who sounds just like him, who plays just like him, you know, God has just blessed us, not just in Detroit, but throughout the country. Absolutely. And uh, we thank him for his faithfulness. It wasn't about the money. I played for my dad's church for years, five hours a week. And I didn't get that <laughs> until I was 12. Bishop, they gave me a raise when I turned 13. It went to six dollars a week. My, my grandfather was the one that pays the salary. When I turned 15, they said, we're going to give you a raise. We know we got to do better. I went to my grandfather that Sunday. He gave me two five dollar bills. So I got a raise to ten dollars. <laughs> and that, that was my uh, reasonable service because my father said, you living in my house. I heard that. <laughs> so uh it went like that uh years later i ended up playing at burnett baptist church years later ended up playing at uh prayer tabernacle church of course and recently and then for many years at new saint paul i spent a time in flint at harris temple with the late bishop bogan god has afforded me a uh, blessed time yeah uh, in my life and i'm thankful that he's yet at work and pastoring and doing the music and producing, God has just opened up tremendous doors and I'm grateful, Bishop. Oh man, and 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 trust me, that y'all listen, that's just a synopsis of Dr. Troy and Pastor Stanfield, my brothers, because uh let me go back, because a lot of people think uh when they think of Andre Woods, they think of St. James, but let Let's go all the way back to our roots. And yes. both my brothers mentioned it. My grandfather, Bishop John Thomas Kerr, yes, sir. Uh, uh, was a musician himself. Yeah. I mean, he he would sit me on the organ with him, and I would get in trouble because when he would preach, I would jump in the pulpit and um, hold on to his leg while he was tuning up and preaching. Or I was in was a baby jumping up and down in his chair till I was able to sit on the organ, and he prayed for my hands. He prayed. That's it. That's it. And um, my my music teacher, I never get forget her, Miss Miss O Strike. That was her name. Oh, uh, elderly white lady at Berry Elementary Church. I wanted to play so bad. She went out the room, and I jumped on the piano. And the kids were just going crazy. And then all of a sudden, they got quiet. I didn't see her because my back was turned to her. And I thought I was in trouble. She said, you got to stay after class. And she asked me, "How? where did you learn how to play like that? And I said, I just, I hear it and I play it. She called my mama. She said, we're going to call my mama. I thought I was going to get it. Next thing I know, she had me in the school musical. And I was the director for the French play. Uh, Jean de Alouette, uh, that was my song I directed <laughs> at Mary Elementary School. 
And from there, my mother put me and my brother in Grinnell's music school and yeah. my grandfather was helping me. And then after my uh, uh, teacher passed at Grinnell's, then I, I met Blessed Anderson Troy yes. and Kenny Troy. Yes. God rest his soul. Kenny Troy. Kenny would come and meet me at the church every day. The first song he taught me was He's Sweet I Know. Every yeah. day, Kenny would come uh, over there on 9201 Mac. Yeah. And we would be on the organ. My grandfather didn't let me do my school homework first. I couldn't go play basketball, couldn't run track. He wanted me on that organ. Yes. And that's how I got started. And Kenny hung with me. And then I met Professor Chris Ware. He became our uh, minister of music. On, he would come do our broadcasts on Sunday night. And you talking about somebody that can whoop an organ, Chris Ware. Yes, sir. He would play the meditation. We would cut the lights down. He would play, even me, Lord, let some drops now fall on me. I'm talking about church. Yes, sir. And then Sunday nights got crazy because everybody started coming. We hired this guy called James Walker, uh, yes. Terry Flowers. They all they all imparted and invested in me. And then um, my grandfather took me to our faith prayer tabernacle one night. Yes, sir. And I sat there in amazement and watched uh, Alfred Bolden walk in and do an organ solo prelude. And then Herbert Picard walked in and got on the piano and they played. Then the choir lined around the wall. Yes, sir. I had never seen nothing like that in my life. And I met the Craig brothers and later on, you know, back then y'all, y'all remember Sam Berry was at Pratt Tabernacle too. Yes, yes. And yes. you remember Daryl Hardy, and yes. Keith, Pringle, Keith Pringle, Pringle, Leslie Bush, all yes. of that crew. We Came met all the Reverend James Cleveland, Yes. And one of my fondest, my fondest things I met, uh, when I met Tommy, Tommy Whitfield, I mean, that boy was whipping that dog. I'm like, who are you and where did you come from? Yes, sir. And uh, y'all forgive us, but we go way back. Porky yeah. and, and Lindsay, that what we the called them. That was Greg, I was Sonny, that was Rudy. Then there was Porky and Lindsay and Tommy. <laughs> and tonight, those are the only guys that's missing on this live tonight that's is our right. brothers. Porky and Lindsay, Bishop Charles Craig, Bishop James Lindsay Craig, and Minister Thomas Whitfield. If they were here, they would be on here with us tonight. tonight. And um, when I met Tommy, uh, he came by Neil Paul and he said, something wrong with you. You don't even take a break. I said, my grandfather taught me once I come in service and sit on the organ, don't get up because you don't never know what I'm going to do. That's right. <laughs> and he was right. My grandfather stopped preaching and started singing. Then he go back to preaching. Yes, then he'll right. stop singing and start prophesying. Then go back to preaching and singing. And then he'll get up, feel like he want to direct the choir. I mean, I just I just had to be there from time I mounted the organ to time to go home. And that's why I thank God for, for all, if Ronnie Kersey would come back, all yeah. of the musicians, Tommy would come and play, Chris would play. I mean, when Rudy came, Gregory came, that's the only time I got a break because <laughs> they were coming by on Sunday nights. And then I got blessed. Uh, when they talk about St. James, let's go back to uh, the Voices of Tabernacle. My first recording was not with uh, 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 St. James. It was with no. the voices of Tabernacle. God has smiled on me. On the God, God has smiled. God yes, sir. Yes. God, God has smiled, smiled on me. We were there live when Reverend James Cleveland taught the choir. God has smiled on me in the studio the yeah. same night they recorded it. And Tommy looked at me. He said, well, since you're here, you might as well play one of these songs. And I'll never forget it. James Lindsay Craig had arranged and wrote a song it won't be long till Jesus come. You can count the years as months. The months yes, is years. Uh -huh. uh, and the weeks is days. And so I played piano. My debut was piano on This Won't Be Long on the yes. God Has Smiled On Me album, which went gold, by the way. I'm still looking for my check. But uh, it went gold. <laughs> uh, <laughs> First gospel album. Then, uh, then the other thing was, we, Gregory and, and, and Rudy and all of us, 
uh, uh, the promises of God, uh, the voices, the tabernacle, the other albums that they did and produced. And, 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 and hey, Rudy and Gregory, y'all remember, y'all remember Artie Field Studio? Yes. Yes, Bishop. sir, on Woodward. Yeah. And we would go down there and record down there with the voices of Tabernacle. And y'all remember, y'all remember Bernie? Yes, Bernie Mendelssohn. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Crazy care. Bernie Mendelssohn. And I mean, we just been blessed. And then, of course, uh, when I went to St. James uh, by way of the Gospel Music Workshop, working with Reverend Nix in the Detroit chapter, uh, I went and, and worked with St. James for years, and the rest was history there. And it was Pastor Nix that encouraged me to start the group Chosen. Now, Chosen was the birth child after we toured with Keith Pringle. Mm. When Keith came out with his album, I feel like going on, Which was the rename myself and Earl, Earl Fisher, my God brother. Yeah, we traveled with, with, with uh, Keith. And I told him, I said, shoot, we sound good together. I called Don Byers. I called, I called Grenade Hunter, uh, Sidereal Butler. And y'all remember Aureen? Aureen. Sang yeah. the Voices of Heaven. Uh, uh, she was getting ready to move to Texas. But I said, you got to write and you got to sing with us. And that's how Chosen was born out of that tour. And then, mm -hmm. of course, Tommy did the line of notes. He encouraged me. And uh, uh, so it's just been history and fellowship. And we would get together and sing. And then, of course, later on at Ford Auditorium, the Craig Brothers was the Tabernacle concerts. And then working with Reverend James Cleveland uh, when he came to Anderson, Indiana, and did a chapter, uh, a concert there with the Anderson chapter with Pat Raymore. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we had that opportunity. And also through the National Gospel Music Workshop of America, playing on some of their national projects. Oh man, we just we just had a ball, and then of course, I did two CDs, two projects with our group, and then of course the song, my signature song, that Keith recorded. I feel like going on, hit the charts, and then it also appears in the movie, The Five Heartbeats, Five Heartbeats. and then my sweetheart Vanessa Bell, Faith That Conquers, and and then Without God with Renee. So God has been good to to us, and now we see. Uh, 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 the legacy behind us, we see Roosevelt, we see Byron, and we see Chris, who are coming along, walking in our steps. And I am so excited and so proud. I don't know which one of these guys want to go first, but y'all need to come on, Chris. <laughs> Roosevelt <laughs> and Byron, we want to hear from you guys. And we thank God for what God is doing in all of your music careers and how the Lord has blessed you now. Because, you know, I've been in his case for the last year, too. You know, you know, you got to put a little fire <laughs> on them, uh, Pastor Stanfield sometime and encourage him to move on. I said, I'm going to tell you all what I did. I sent Chris and Roosevelt my bio. I said, now listen around the world twice. You know, our names is then the Smithsonian in Washington. I mean, we got plaques around. I got enough plaque to make wallpaper. I got plaques and certificates in boxes and stuff. I told them I don't need another plaque. I need a check. That's right. I had his listen, so listen, Roosevelt, what are you doing? He froze here. He's the minister of music over at uh, Bishop Eric Mitchell. Come on, Doc, and give us what's going on with you. Uh, well, first of all, hello, everybody. Uh, everybody on this platform uh, is very special to me in one way or another, especially musically. Uh, you know, when this, when this was first presented, uh, it was something that me, Byron, and Chris had talked about for years. Uh, we would come together at my house uh, when I was stand on the west side, and we would talk and say, you know, it would be real nice <laughs> to get with them one day and, you know, 
and glean from them. And, you know, we always glean from them, but uh, I noticed something about you guys. You guys talk more uh, from an observation standpoint. And I learned so much from just the observation uh, and it has really blessed my life. Um, I started playing drums. Uh, I had no desire to play an organ. I had no thought of writing a song. Um, I was happy play being a drummer at 9201 Mac Avenue because I saw Uncle Sneaky playing drums mm -hmm. and I play drums because it looked cool. He made it look cool. <laughs> and so I wanted to play the drums. And so uh, I, I, I learned how to play drums. I went to Fiddler Music School on Mac Avenue in Gross Point, went to Fiddler and uh, studied drum, playing drums at Fiddler. And I would come back from what I got from Fiddler and watch Uncle Sneaky and I take what Uncle Sneaky did back to Fiddler and they say, no, nah, we ain't doing it like that here. <laughs> this is what I want to do. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, it, it, was, it was a good experience. And uh, I started playing uh, the organ, uh, not out of uh, I want to transition. I just wanted to learn how to play this one song. It's one song that I heard, and when I heard it, I was like, oh, that's sweet. I like that. And all I wanted to do was learn how to play this one song, and I was going back to the drums. And a lot of people probably don't know this, but that one song that I heard that started me to playing, getting on the organ and playing organ was Just Call Him, the song that Bishop wrote for Esther Smith. Right. Wow. I heard that song. And I, I just wanted to learn how to play that one song, and that was it. And so they started what was called the Spirit Choir at Neapolitan. And uh, they, they uh, taught the Spirit Choir, just call them, and I wanted to play it. So when I played it, my Uncle Johnny said, okay, that's enough of the drums. You're going to start playing organ now. And I said, well, I don't want to play organ. I just want to learn how to play the one song. He said, no, you're going to start playing organ. So I was kind of forced into it, but then after a while, I started liking it. And so, uh, I started uh, uh, sitting with the late Al Green, Alfonso Green. Yes, yes. Sylvester, um, uh, Richie King. Started sitting mm -hmm. with those guys and picking up here and there. And I would go and sit in St. James rehearsals uh, and that was, that was just a lesson. That was a lesson all by itself to see, uh, uncle JD command that choir and, and, and watch how they came together and the sound that was produced. It was just amazing to me. And, you know, and to watch on Sunday nights as a kid, to watch all of y'all come into church on night service at any given time and it just started service all over again yes it did <laughs> i mean it was it was i think i had a, re a very good uh childhood musically uh because to me y'all were stars <laughs> you know and when y'all came in i mean it was it was fire it, it was just it was just fire every single time and uh it's just been a blessing you know um uh, I've, 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 I'm not a strong player, you know, never uh, uh, looked at myself as a, a real player. You but... hold your own, nephew. Yeah, yeah. Right. 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 right, right, right. Yeah. I put it you like You got, I you got the part of me I don't have, cause I ain't trying to direct no choir. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I'm just gonna tell you, I ain't getting up flagging nothing. I'm going to sit and play. You know, I lift my hands and start them and lift my hands to end them. That's it. So you got that down, brother. You know, I, I play good enough until the real musicians show up. But 
that aspect of it, I will, I will not take down from it. Yes, I, I can direct. Yes, I can write. And writing has become uh, my, my true love and passion. Um, uh, and primarily because I watched you guys do it so well. Um, and it has, it has really inspired me uh, as far as writing goes. And um, you guys have just blessed my whole life musically. Well, that, that, that's, that's been our intent. And I tell you, 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 you guys got it. Come on, come on, Chris. Where you at, man? What up, though? What up, though? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's crazy, man. Just listen to all the stories. Hello, everybody. First of all, man, <laughs> pleasure, man, just to be a part of this legacy, man. I, I don't take it for granted at all. Um, it's so funny to hear all the stories connecting and, um, it is like, man, this is like, man, I'm reliving like they lives all over again. <laughs> like literally, um, from my father, um, to my uncle, uh, Mr. Woods, to Pastor Stanfield. It's like, it's, it's, it's freaky scary to me because like, like on that bridge and the gap thing, I've, I've seen over by me playing, like even with Roosevelt, how he even started off. I started off on drums. Right, right. Uh, didn't have a clue of uh, playing keys, but sitting on working with my father and seeing how cool my Sonny was, my uh, <laughs> Pastor, my Bishop Woods, my uh, Pastor Phil was, and, and seeing how man, when the spirit would get high, my my father would just like command the church service, and it was just it would be amazing to me to see that. So um, again, starting off as a drummer playing man and uh. Like man, hear about that fifteen dollar thing? I was playing the drums at uh, <laughs> it was, it was prayer time with the City Temple, uh, then the great greater prayer time at the time. Playing there, man, playing fifteen dollars, man, two services, morning, and night. Come back, man, then all of a sudden, man, it's just like man, I didn't want to play no more, and I just wanted to play keys. I ran into uh, ran into Byron, we uh, started connecting uh, over at Craig Memorial, and uh, we would do the youth concerts with my father, and on four Sundays, so. I would see Byron playing. I was like, man, my Rudy son playing. I'm like, man, I, I, I want to figure this out myself. <laughs> like, man, it's good for the boy to run and play. I was like, man, I'm like, man, I hope, like, man, it's like, I hope everything lined up like, like that with me one day. And then one day, the desire came when I had the opportunity to play. Talking about Ronnie Carson, he was yeah, the one that yeah. actually gave me the opportunity. To play with uh, Bishop uh, Eric Mitchell. Yes. Excuse me, but uh, he won end up praying over my hands as well. And from there, man, there I go. Prayer works. And uh, from there, man, I've been able to play. And uh, my uh, Pastor Tanfield was able to give me my first opportunity to uh, record with the Detroit uh, chapter. I got some music workshop and stuff like that. So. You did an incredible job, Chris. Yeah, Thank you. yeah, very much so. Yeah. The point about that, what Chris doing, you know, I really didn't show Chris anything. Really, Chris learned the Lord taught him most of what he learned. And I think that's what happened to me. Getting back to my two brothers, that one named Pastor Stanfield, he, you had to know him and his, his, his demeanor what he play and when he do stuff because I played with that brother and that brother well you know just amazed me I just start playing and look around and say did you do this did you really do this and basically I think the only one really showed me something was was Rudy didn't show me he made me learn if I did some uh, uh Reverend that hands got all together uh and it's a good thing I like playing with Chris. Chris, if I do something wrong, dude, that's wrong. That's not the chord. It's not the chord. <laughs> dude, that's the chord. That chord you passed, dude. He would say something like that. And I'll say, okay. I'll laugh and get it. And he checked me. He said, dude. That's based uh -uh, to my Uncle Rudy. Rudy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and playing with Rudy at New St. Paul, I learned a lot because I never played with Church of God in Christ. I didn't know that was that heavy. And yeah. I just sit there and be amazed because he very sudden when he get off the organ, because Bishop liked the organ. He didn't care about that keyboard. 
He mm -hmm. loved that organ. And he, he was all right. But um, and I think that's that, that, you know, Chris learned through the Holy Spirit. I, I just amazed at it. I love playing with all of y'all. Um, yeah. Chris is, um, I just love it because I just see the Lord just use him. He played for the Whitfield Company. He does this. And you give him a sign and he's particular to have it right. If you tell him to learn this, I watched him. I, I'm going yeah. to do this. And, All right, and, Byron, you ready? Uh, uh, sure. <laughs> All right. This is uh, Byron Stanfield. Come on, brother. <clears throat> uh, 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 how did it kick off? Uh, well, like uh, my brothers uh, Chris and uh, Roosevelt, uh, I started on drums. I think yeah. I got my first drum set when I was maybe 18 months old, something like that. Um, yeah. At the, age of, at the age of four, uh, uh, Christmas, 1984, uh, my Christmas gift from my dad was a Wurlitzer electric piano. Um, I didn't Don't find out until years one. later. Yeah, that, I didn't find out until years later that uh, Pops was, uh, um, I believe, uh, said he was going through like some wage garnishments or whatever. So he couldn't actually afford to get me anything that year. So he gave me his personal, uh, that was his piano. Yeah. And that's hey, what he, that's what hey he, Byron, can, we can't see you. Is your, Network fading I'm, out on you. Oh, there you uh, go. Okay. There you go. There you go. There oh. you go. Okay. You had disappeared so, for um, a minute. Oh, sorry about that. So, um, yeah. So he gave me that for Christmas, age four. Uh, the very first song he actually showed me was uh, the melody for Joy to the World, Nakia C. Show. I guess because it has so many black keys in it. Um, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, of course, as he mentioned, uh, at age five, lesson number two was uh, "Perfect Peace." That was uh, uh, the first song he, the first chords I learned. Um, and then, from age five until whatever age, he he really wasn't real hands-on at all uh and uh uncle greg uh kind of alluded to the fact That's that the way my dad the way my dad would operate was um i i remember very distinctly he would it would be me um eddie moore yes, damian sir. brown we would be with him at uh new revelation rehearsals and he would just sit a tape recorder on the organ and make a tape and just play for, you know, about 15, 20 minutes or whatever. And we could, you know, we stand mm -hmm. I had that experience. Watching over, looking over his shoulder and watching, but he never actually really broke anything down and said, this is what I'm doing. But after he get done, he makes the tape, go in the back, copy it, give all three of us a copy of it and say, here, learn that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that Maybe part. That's right. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I mean, oh, for for years, people would always ask. Um, you know, as I got older and got a little better and 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 progressed uh, skill wise, um, people would say, you know, did your dad teach you? You know, did did he show you anything? And I I said, no, not really. You know, it was. Uh, um, and he kind of explained that uh, he did that purposely because he said he wanted to go here. Um, yes. So I, I mean, I guess it. I guess it worked. But, <laughs> oh, it worked. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, it worked it real not. well, Doc. Worked real well. Uh, it worked. Yeah. Oh so, man. Um, yeah, my. Uh, yeah, my 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 first experience for as far as actually playing piano organ for a church was um, for uh, the youth choir under the direction of 
uh, Dr. Gregory Troy and Sandy Rhodes. Um, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Did, 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 did that every week um, uh, <laughs> for no salary. No, <laughs> you're right. You're right. Salary. And then I think, uh, after, I think after, I think after a couple years, uh, once I turned maybe 15, I, I think I went to Reverend Craig uh, and I, I asked, could I get put on salary? And he said, yeah, of course. And then uh, it went from zero to $35 a week. Um, <laughs> Did did that for a while. Uh, I think when I turned uh, sixteen or seventeen, um, I got the opportunity to play at Second Avenue the Baptist Church, uh, Pastor uh, or Bishop Edgar L. Van, um, which was uh, uh, a blessing. That was a great experience because I was over there under uh, Curtis Griffin. Yes, sir. and of. Uh, of course, uh, minister music, uh, Michael Fletcher. Yeah. So, yes. um, yeah, so that, that, that was great. That helped grow me. Um, went from there, uh, got a chance to play for, uh, Pastor Charlie Green over at Lighthouse Cathedral. Um, and just from there, just, you know, just things progressed. Uh, um, dad started you know, taking me around with him and uh, using me. I, the first live recording that I was uh, able to be a part of was uh, uh, our cousin, uh, Reverend James Moore, his, the last live recording he did uh, before he passed away, the uh, James, James Moore family and friends. Um, and then of course, uh, uh, dad uh, allowed me to be a part of uh, uh, New Revelations uh, last project, um, the Millennial Praise, and um, then I got personally I got off into uh, production and uh, programming. Um, was working with um, uh, my well one of my best friend Brandon Holland, uh, uh, son of uh, Bishop Carl Holland. Uh, mm -hmm. We started writing and producing this stuff together, and that led to uh, uh, various opportunities. Um, uh, we linked up with uh, Alan and Walter Kearney from uh, with uh, Pajam. So that you know that led to doing working with various artists like uh e. we wrote on uh Kiara Shear's first album. Uh we participated uh in I believe four of uh Jay Moss's projects. Um got a chance to uh write and produce for uh Vanessa Bell Armstrong. Uh and you know various other people so um that i got from being around my father uh being around guys like uh dr troy not only that my mother um song with uh the donald veils uh mm -hmm. when the liver so i got to i got part. to come up yes so i got to uh I grew up being around the likes of uh, Carol Cole, uh, yes. Dr. LaQuint Weaver. Yes. Um, of course, uh, of course, uh, Dr. Vales himself. Um, so I just from both both parents, um, it was just uh, yeah. I had a groom to. Um, I couldn't really, I couldn't really avoid the this uh music thing even if i wanted to <laughs> had i really had, had i really thought about it i i probably would have had i had i really thought about it, i probably would have ran from it just considering the shadow that my father cast For sure. you know what i'm saying like because those those are uh those are big shoes to feel but i didn't know no better back then so i just kept doing it 
<laughs> Come on, bro. That's real talk. Man, you walking in them shoes well. Oh, yeah. very well. All of them. Well, you know, I am, I am, I am sitting here just 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 welling up with tears almost to see you guys do so well. And um, there's so much future and so much ahead of you that the Lord will bless you to do. Uh, but you got just keep doing it. Keep pressing at it. Keep keep going, man. Keep writing. Keep producing. Just keep yourself out there. Keep yourself available. You just never know who going to hear you. And you never know when the phone will ring. You never know your next text could be, you know, turned into your next check. You know, yes, right. you just never know. And so uh, make your presence. You've made your presence felt. And we're just so proud of all three of you guys. And uh, uh, we just can't thank God enough for what he's doing in you guys, with you guys, what he's going through. But I want y'all to know, your fathers, we ain't through yet. No. So y'all better come on with it. You know, and what we need to do, <laughs> now listen, this is me. What we need to do is, is find some time and have a private Zoom meeting and collaborate on a, on a father-son project. That's what we need to do. I agree. All y'all come up with something and write something, produce it. We'll find, we'll find some singers. Oh, yeah. That ain't going to be no problem finding singers, but to, to put something together uh, uh, and, and put out, put it out at a time. We can do one project or do sing one single at a time. Keep them coming back to back, you know, so that, uh, uh, and Rudy and Gregory, listen, uh, I, I'm already poisoning myself. I'm getting ready, positioning myself. We need to do a, a instrumental yeah, an instrumental tribute to all of our mentors. I mean, in memory of of, of Herbert Picard, Tommy Whitfield, Charles Nix, the, all of those, Alma Hendricks, and all of them that um, poured into us. Yeah. Frank White, you yes. know. I mean, yeah. all of these musicians that uh, we heard and gleaned from. And like, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I call myself a workshop baby. When the gospel music workshop started, we, we went to every convention. They drug us there, and we were able to network. And uh, shoot, I got so many uh, workshop opportunities to travel around the country doing workshops. And we were slick while all of the, just all the stars were going to the big cities. I was going to the little hick towns because they had never seen musicians and singers like us. Right. So <laughs> I was cleaning up going on to the farm towns and the and the municipalities and all of that. <laughs> but it, it was such a blessing, man, to see how people receive your gifts and your talent. And you all are on on a on a trail. Uh and you all are trailblazers in yeah. your own right. I know you all talk about our shadow, but you know, you got your own identity, yes, yes, yes. you got your own name, and I want to encourage you guys to continue uh, what you do uh, in your own right. Uh, and uh, I just want I just want to see you all do the best uh, in this industry. I believe choirs are coming back, mm -hmm. and I believe that there's going to be a time, because me, I'm just a choir boy. You know, I, I am. Some of my music. That's all I hear is choir singing. Uh, some stuff I'm working on even right now. So I want you guys to know how much we love you, how how proud we are of you. And we want the world to know the name Byron Stanfield, uh, Roosevelt Hampton, Christopher Jones. We want the world to know who you are, because they have not heard what they're going to hear from you in days to come. Amen. Yes, and Pastor Rudolph Stanfield, he got some stuff. He's coming with some more. Dr. Gregory Troy, Bishop Andrea Wood, listen, it's not over. You know, we we, we got things we're going to be putting out. 
recording songs. And let me put a plug in for all. Now, if there's any artists out there, y'all need a song, holler. <laughs> we got all these writers on here. Holler at us. We got a pool of writers right here. If you need a song for your project and you need a song uh, for your solo, your choir, listen, we're here. And let me say this. Um, uh, let's talk a minute about this while we have you three guys on. You know, we started the Fellowship of Music and Arts back in 2014, and mm -hmm. I've been trying to reach out to musicians. We talk about bridging the gap, and for yes. whatever reason, they feel like we're going to dog them. They call us old school, you know, but my, my question to them, how come I can play what y'all can play, but y'all can't play what I can play? How come they still calling me? How come when I go to a funeral and one of these veterans get up and sing a hymn, y'all sitting there lost? You know, and they got to call me, Rudy or Gregory, to get on the organ. We're just trying to bridge the gap. We're not browbeating you. Listen, yeah. I don't want to die and let all of this wisdom, experience, and knowledge to go to the grave. Yeah, right. And we, we've been trying to have workshops, and we've invited you. We even had the president of the Detroit Federation of Music, music mm -hmm. Musicians come. We've had Dr. Nord Duncan from Wayne State University come. Mm -hmm. We had Dr. Weary come, uh, of the professor who's teaching the music industry business at Wayne now. Now Byron, I'm talking, not Byron, Brandon, Brandon Waddles have yeah. just been added to the uh, a faculty of Wayne State University. I'm gonna be interviewing him and his dad soon. So listen, uh, 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 Chris, I want you to lead off in it. How can we bridge this gap between uh, uh, generations to let these musicians know all we're trying to do is pass the baton? Well, basically, more so of, um, I would say, an information standpoint. Um, I don't know if the approach is thinking of the workshops, thinking that we're coming to learn music or whatever that's cool but at the same time um the information will succeed what we're doing it with the playing because we have information say about songwriters and producers and stuff like that we things are, are called points and you know you get your royalties and stuff like that so, you know so we don't have to have to be playing all our lives so that that kind of stuff uh if, if that approach i feel like is took in or is like more talked about I feel like it's more accepted, uh, especially with my generation of cats that I hang around. That's basically what we talk about. I always bring it up, let them know that you all are approachable. I'm not the only one that I can touch y'all. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's, that's that's the dynamic that I know I have with, uh, with, with my people is that I'm connected to you all and still connected to my people as well. So it's like, uh, and I hear both sides. So, and we always come to the common denominator is that we know how to play. We get some of that. Okay, some we don't want to play everything, but at the same time, and give us some give us some information to get to where you all are at. Or how did you get to where you all are at? It's still with this. I don't know. I don't. That's just my. That's 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 just my my guess at it. It's more so information. Yeah, but but you know, I was trying to tell these guys that even if they play for a play, even if they play in a club, wherever they want to play, if they're going to travel with an artist on the road and do tours, that's, but my thing is join the union so you can demand union scale. Yes, sir. And get paid. I've been posting, I posted something the other day when I got my uh, May magazine you know, we went through this pandemic and most of our guys, I, we just did a work. Y'all can see his picture. Yeah. Who picture is that? Y'all know who that is? Y'all don't, oh, yeah. don't know B-Love when y'all see it. Yeah, B-Love. Oh, I, I can see it now. I can see it. Yeah, yeah I, you froze up for a second. But yeah, we see yeah, it now. That's, uh, that's Brian. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Be, be love. Yeah. He's featured in the keynote magazine because he joined. Listen, they got money. And I've been, they've, some have been calling me. They got money to pay you in this pandemic forgivable grants that you don't have to pay these workers in the club. And these guys that are in the union, how you think the symphony orchestra has been sustained? Cause they're union members. How you think these guys that, that, that the tours from the plays Broadway and all of the concerts at orchestra hall and Fisher theater, all of these people got canceled and still getting paid, their bills getting paid is because they are members of the union. And, you know. and so we're just trying to give out that information. And uh, I'm, I'm going to have George back real soon on a Zoom to do some stuff. But all I'm saying to us between a, a Pastor Rudolph Stanfield, who has done it all, Dr. Yes. Greg Troy, who's seen it all, done it all, myself, and then all of the expertise that you all are getting as you experience your musical careers, we can, I can help a brother from getting burnt like I got burnt without feel like going on. I had to sue to get my song, get my rights back to my song because somebody tried to steal it, you know, yeah. because it was in the movie. But all I'm saying is, we don't know everything. I'm still learning. I love to sit with you guys and learn the new chords, the new progressions. And, and trust me, if I hear you, I'm recording in my mind. I don't care where you are. This recorder still records, and I still learn from everything I hear. And what we want, we, it's just my desire to see all of the musicians that we have influence with, you know, to upgrade themselves because uh, we're not going to be on the scene forever. We're going to be on there close to forever, but not forever, uh, for a long time. We're praying for longevity. But while we're here, take advantage of what we're offering, the information, and as we prepare to plan to do some workshops, we want to hear what you need, what you want. It's not enough just to know how to play a chord anymore. You know, That's right. That's you know right. right now, Right now, I got a friend now, uh, Walter Scrutches in Ohio, who's who's doing composition and scoring music. He he's scoring so much music too. He he almost got to quit his job teaching at the school. But um, what I'm saying to you is, there are so many opportunities in the exactly. music industry besides being in front of the camera or an artist. You got a lot of writers that make just as much money as the artists do because of their writing. Yes. If not more. They ain't if never sung a note. And if but not their more. music is out there. And so, yeah, that, and you got, pub, you got producers. Producers get producers contract and they keep getting caught. Look, look, at, look at these guys who are out there. Look at Donald Lawrence. Donald Lawrence just talking, don't, don't too much saying. Look at Kirk Franklin. Look at all these other guys that are out there doing, and you all have the same potential, and uh, we just want to see you do it. And you know, Pastor Stanfield, come on. Let me say this too: um, the the workshops that were offered, um, that information was absolutely shared, uh, and I tried to get that generate the younger generation to come and get the information. The information was shared on how you can get health care as a musician, how you can get your publishing and get your contracts right and uh, get, your, get your songwriters royalties and how you can uh, collect a pension uh, with the union. I mean, all that information was there, it was available, but you, they gotta come get it. And all, you know, yeah. you know it's, yeah. it's available. And I, I know you guys have been sharing it because I've been there uh, I wish everybody else would, you know, just get the information. I mean, yeah, you have to lose by just getting the information. Yeah, well, we, we're not gonna stop. We're gonna we're gonna keep doing it, and we're gonna try to create a form. We're gonna get together. I'm gonna get together with Pastor. Hey, do y'all know about and, this? Um, do y'all know yeah. about the uh, Detroit scenes that's coming up Monday night? But, um, 
<clears throat> James Brooks, Jay Brooks, Michael Brooks' son. He has this new that. thing that he's doing. Um, it's going to be at Pastor Welton Smith's church outside Monday night uh, that he's doing uh, with a new generation that's coming up with all yeah. the original music supposed to be. So, uh, like, stuff like that, I don't know, like, reach out to him on social media or whatever. I don't know that you're there to support, man. Like that kind, of, that kind of that kind of stuff, man. Go a long way, man. Just let them know that you support them, however, even if you don't go physically. You know what and I'm saying? The stuff reality like is, the reality is, music transcends and it crosses the, the denominational lines. Don't get caught up in that phase of it or aspect in it because you play for a particular church or you're a member at a particular right. church. Uh, I didn't mention it earlier, but one of my greatest influence, of course, was Dr. Clark and Twinkie. And right. you can't separate that. The very first time uh, the Clark sisters did, you brought the sunshine out. I don't even know if she would even remember it. I sat and played the piano with Twinkie at Cloudborn Studio. I didn't even know where I was going. Armin Belladium brought me to the session. They recorded You Brought the Sunshine live and many times after that, but there was an initial studio version that had taken place at Cloudborn on Mac Avenue out in Gross Point. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But I'm just saying, uh, we've got to be able to reach and communicate with all. When you join the union, you don't realize that what they do you're paying into a social security. You're paying in some other things because they're going to take it out. At some point or another, you should not necessarily be in the position like a lot of our musicians have, musicians Absolutely. have over the years. And yeah. you almost 70 looking for some place to play because you have not taken care of your business or taken care of yourself. I think when Byron turned 18, I had a conversation with him, and I think you were 18, and I'm not sure, Byron, your birthday present was your own publishing company. And I think I shared with him, I said, I don't want anybody to ever be able to control the wealth of your music or take your music right. from you. Him and Brandon worked on a piece that ended up in the movie Deep Blue Sea That's that right. Aaron Couge was in, That's and right. they were teenagers. Yep. That's right. I remember that. Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean it's it's out there, and what what we're gonna do? We we're gonna we're gonna decide on a good time. We can do it, um, and then share this information and um, get it out to everybody. Uh, because when I started out, I, I made a lot of mistakes. I didn't know. Thank God for the late Fran Harding. Yes, from, yes. From uh, Oakland, California. She stopped me at the workshop one day, and when I told her about the, all the songs, I had done my own production with the Anderson, Indiana Gospel Music Workshop chapter. I did uh, uh, my own project, my first production, Are You Ready to Serve Jesus? I did most of all, all of the songs on there, and she made sure everything was copywritten for me. Everything was published through Hen Fan Music at the time. And then uh, 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 now doing my own thing. But we, you need somebody, you need to surround yourself with people who know what you don't know so you can know. You know, you can't be where till you are aware because I know y'all love God. I know you love the Lord. You feel saved, sanctified, got the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. But the music business don't care about you speaking in tongues. No, no. The industry. No. And we all, have had, we all have had some yes. kind of horror stories. Uh, yes, sir. The late, great Edwin Hawkins talked to me about situations that he had uh, with some horror stories with the music he was doing and arranging. So it, it has come across all of our desks at some point or another. So it's not like we just blowing in the wind. Uh, I don't want to happen to me to happen to the next generation or the generation after that. Yeah, yeah. Man. And we we got the information. We got the do's and don'ts. And um, and and even if you don't do gospel music, the fellowship of music and arts is simply that 
we cover all genres. Yeah. We are we are a fine arts 501c3. Listen, we are a nonprofit. And what yes, I'm getting sir. ready to do, I'm gonna get with my brothers. We getting ready, you know. Well, I ain't gonna say what I'm gonna do because you know, some of y'all talk too much. Y'all be done told it before I can get it going. Anyway, we getting ready to do something. Just know that. <laughs> so <laughs> and it's coming, but um, yeah, that 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 is that that's 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 a great that's a great bait mechanism too. When you say it's, it's open up to more than this gospel, because I don't know if people don't have that understanding. Yeah. Either. So that's great information right there. I, I I think they think all we we we've ever played was gospel. No, a lot of people, yeah. and that's a lot of people's perception. I used to tell the story, and I I'll tell it real quick that me and Tommy had a group called Juan Joel. Yes, right. sir. Before the Whitfield Company. Y'all yeah, remember? Y'all yes. remember the little group with Phyllis Lyons <laughs> and Karen? Yes, sir. Yes, Bill, sir. Bill Lyons uh, <laughs> and David Whitfield. Come on now. Yeah, we had a we had a little we had a little now, jazz Craig group. Was in that, Mr. Now, um, Reverend Craig was in that one, right? Yeah, he 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 he, he didn't he didn't come sing with us because he was scared. He's scared what they're gonna talk. <laughs> I said, listen, Doc, we're not scared because when we went out to River, Riverview, Michigan, out there at the Kickapoo Lounge, <laughs> you know, they put the big jar, they put the tip jar on the piano, my okay. Lord. And and those folk out there didn't mind. And I ain't talking about tipping no dollars. Come on, man. No, no. They, was, they was tipping 50s and uh, talking about the Benjamins, they they was putting it in there. Plus, we were paid. I mean, we did banquets and weddings, and we did a whole lot of stuff, you know. And then we still went to church because they wasn't paying us at church. My grandfather, when they did start paying me, I didn't tell that. I got to throw that in there. He was paying me twenty five dollars, and then he asked for it back <laughs> <laughs> because he said, "I just want you to know what can happen, but." You got to be. You got to pay your tithes, and by the time right. you pay your tithes out of this and give your offering, you got to give it back. You don't pay for one music lesson. You don't pay for nothing. I done bought you your first car. Now I ain't gonna pay for your music lesson. You going We not gonna pay you to practice on us. That's what they say. That was That's his hard. words to me. <laughs> but I thank God for the journey. Thank God. <laughs> listen, guys. Listen, we've been on here almost an hour and a half. And uh, we, we haven't even skimmed the surface, but I thank God for you all just jumping in when mm -hmm. I called you about this idea. And uh, uh, and I've been posting the picture. You know what? Every time people see me, Greg, and Rudy, you know, they be saying, oh, Lord, here they come. You know, <laughs> they just try to give us. <laughs> I'm telling you, when we were coming up, they used to call us the wrecking crew, you know. They, they used to call, they used to try to talk about their reputation preceding them. But all we were was just church musicians trying to play the Lord's song. And we thank God for all of the memories. Now, listen, we're going to do this again. We got to do part two, y'all, sometime next month. And then we're going we gonna to let Byron and, and, uh, uh, we're going to let Roosevelt and Chris run things, and we're going to sit back and listen to y'all next time because I, I have talked enough, you know. <laughs> but I love you guys, and I appreciate what God is doing in you. And the Bible say the latter shall be great. Listen, Calvin Rome, Larry Whitfield, Sandra Smith, Eric Gray. I mean, the people are jumping. I just didn't want to start calling names. But they, but they own here. Chris, your mother, Philip Johnson, the Donna Bell. I can't go down this whole list, but they, oh, Denise Morton is yeah. on here. Uh, um, Rodney Watt is on our Listen, side. Ron, Ronald Alexander, Dr. Alexander is yes, on. Sir. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they've been chiming in, James Majors, they chiming in for us, and a good friend out of New York. Dr. Julius Dix, bless all of you yes, yes. Uh, for chiming in and sharing with us. Pastor Stanfield, uh, Dr. Craig, is there any, any last words you all want to give? Then we're going to 
have our son say something before we pray. Uh, I'm praying. Go ahead, Dr. Gore. I just say it's been a privilege. It's been a great honor to share with uh, everybody. Everybody has their own unique style. And I thank God for all the experience I had sharing with um, with all of my brothers, my nephew, my son. It has been one great thing. And I think I think uh, one point that I didn't bring out, the most important thing I think I did in life is in 2001, when I had the chance to go to Rome with the late Bishop Solomon Burke and went to the Vatican to see the Pope. And that was an experience and we did what a wonderful world it should be. And I never forgot that. And my late sister, uh, for whatever reason, they, Billy Preston couldn't make that gig. And she said, Dr. Burke, so-and-so. And I think that opened my eyes up to uh, a whole lot. Cause I'd never been to Rome, never thought I would go, not to the Vatican, but that experience, it, it, it made me um, more concerned about music. As I got older now, um, I, I, I tell people when they see me, you play, I say, yeah, but my son's doing what I used to do. He's doing a good job. I'm kind of slacking up back, going to get back into ministry. Um, but uh, I have enjoyed the fellowship with Rudy. Uh, you, uh, when you wrote the song, I feel like going on right there when you wrote it. Uh, see these guys, I want to bless them and let them know, keep writing, keep, I don't write like y'all do. I'm, I'm slow at that. The Lord give me that gift of writing like y'all do, but I, I listened to the transition, especially with Rudy when he did Stare Up the Gift. And I remember when he was playing for Rita and I said, this is that bass line. And I listened to him, I, I analyzed what I do, I analyzed the situation. Then I, I sit back and talk about it. Wonderful stuff y'all have done, Perfect Peace. Um, we talked about the stuff you did with Vanessa Bell Bishop. Just, uh, I'm glad to be a part. And uh, it really, if it wasn't for Pastor Stanfield, and Chris's mother, I never would have had got a chance to play for the Craig brothers. Is that when Rudy got that accepted job in Flint, they didn't have a musician. She put my name to the Craig and gave right. me a chance. Mm -hmm. And that's how, and Rudy right. was gracious to say, go ahead, you know. Uh, he, you know, he, he came back when he did sessions, showed me this and showed me that. So I want to say thank you to him because it had not been for him or Connie. I would have never ever probably played for the Craig brothers and until they didn't mind, until they passed away. Uh played with them boys and it was uh, a great honor. Great honor, great honor to play with all of y'all. So I just I love y'all. Just keep doing what we're doing and see what God is gonna do. Yes, okay, yes. Pastor. We, have, uh, we all have teachable moments. I was listening to what Byron was saying earlier and uh uh, I learned a lot that way. Uh, Tommy never would sit and show me the stuff that we were going to do with the company. He would just say, listen. He got his back, but, Byron. <laughs> but then he, would, then he would say, your ears is like this. Yes, sir. And what he knew with yes, you, sir. Bishop, and myself, he saw what was in us. Uh, just grateful. I think sometimes people think that we have arrogance. Arrogance is not the same as confidence. That's right. And that's something that's right. Right. what God does. We we are touchable, but we've had moments of human experiences. Sometimes it's been humiliation, and we had to learn how to put one foot in front of the other and keep going. And I say to my son and and my nephews, whatever you do, trust God. Yes, sir. Necessarily, and this is to anybody that's listening, don't necessarily believe what the professionals say about you. Believe what God says about you and who you are. That's it. And that's in, it. Time, in this time of COVID, uh, we have quite a few losses. And uh, I just want to continue to pray for those who have lost loved ones from last year and this year. And, and the music in the church has experienced great losses. Exactly. So we don't, we don't take anything for granted. Uh, let's hold one another up in prayer. Uh, 
the one thing that Bishop Walter Hawkins said, I'll never forget. He said, we have to learn to be secure in who we are. And that will help us not to be jealous or envious of what's <laughs> going on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, that that's that's what I love. Somebody had nerve enough to ask me when I posted a picture. Y'all remember when we was in Sinbad's for my mother's birthday? Yeah. yeah. And we took a picture together. They want to know, where were y'all at? Where was y'all? Look like y'all was at a bar. Yeah, we so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I tell you, church folk is something else. They want to know where we were, what, who all was there. None of y'all business. My God. You know, we do more than play the organ. We go out and fellowship. We just have a fellowship because of this pandemic. You subject to see us anywhere. We know all the eating spots. Yes, we do. We got stock in every restaurant in Detroit. Trust yes. me. They yes, know us do. when we walk in. Yeah, they do. So we love that, but um, <laughs> we thank God for that. So, so fellas, uh, give us give us some parting words tonight. Start with Byron. Uh, I'm really uh, <laughs> just uh, I I was just listening, you know. Like I I mean I'm was uh surprised and and honored to be asked to even join the conversation but uh i mean i i thoroughly enjoyed it and and um you know i'm just i'm just, just humbled by the experience yeah, humble is the way doc thank you thank you rose yeah uh i'm i'm, I'm glad uh we had this opportunity I hope we get many 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 more Say it in your preacher voice now. I'm happy though. I'm happy that, you know, uh, this has come together. I hope we can do it uh, many more times. And uh, I now understand, uh, as Byron understands, and uh, that you won't get a sit down all the time. You're going to get somebody to sit there and they're going to play. Uh, like my daddy did for an hour and a half and then get off the organ and then go in the office talking about he got a meeting. <laughs> I couldn't understand what was going on. But I listened to that tape and I listened to that tape and I listened to that tape and I tried to pick every nugget I could out of that tape. And then I had another tape. I don't know if Uncle Rudy remember this. Uh, it was at Der uh, Derek Logan's uh, oh wow! It was at Derek Logan's uh, memorial service. Yes, and he came in. This was the first time I had heard "Perfect Peace" played this way in my life, and it was. I had my tape recorded. I was breaking down the drums, actually, <clears throat> and he started playing, and my tape recorder was still going, and I, I, I think Byron got that tape. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if he, I don't know if I let him hear it and it kind of slipped out. <laughs> but, uh, but man, that tape, that, 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 that night when he did that uh, presentation of perfect peace, man, that just changed my whole trajectory, my whole trajectory on wanting to become a writer and really honing in and listening to uh the the way you guys constructed songs and 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 man it's this has just been a blessing and you know to hear uncle gregory uh play meditation music i mean it's it's to grow up in the in the era that i grew up in in the era we grew up in i mean it's man seconds in the man yeah. you beat it so thank you all thank y'all yeah. Thank you. Chris. Yeah, man. Basically did all everything your brothers done said, man. Um just thankful, man, um, to be able to be, like I said, born into this legacy, man. Like I said, man, uh both my parents, like uh, my dad said, uh, my mom, very important part of my musical career, uh her yes. being an original member of uh the Whitfield company, her being the original member of actually the New Revelations as well. So uh yeah. Prayer Tabernacle. Yeah, Tabernacle. Yeah, Tabernacle, Voice of Tabernacle. So man, those 
the connections, man. I'm just, I'm grateful, man. <laughs> it's like I, I couldn't, I couldn't ask for nothing better than this. And uh, thank, like Roosevelt said, man, thank you all for uh, everything you have done in the industry, uh, personally, uh, and in every way that you have reached every uh, us and our peers in this the world, man. You all have touched a lot of lives. A lot yeah. of lives. Um, to be connected to you all is a, a privilege, man, all by itself. And Absolutely. an honor Absolutely. to be a part of that. Um, and it's not taken lightly at all. Um, so, man, again, thank you all. Thank you all. And uh, y'all stay healthy, man, and stay here with us, man. Y'all all we got. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. So, um, <laughs> Y'all all we got, man, and um, looking forward to doing this again, man, to talk a little bit more, get a little bit more deeper into what we all, how we all got to where we at now. Yeah, because um, I thank you. One thing I want to say about Rudy, I call him Rudy, no, 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 no disrespect. We brothers, man. You know, Andre, uh, you, Roosevelt, Byron, Chris, it's one thing I'm glad about Detroit. Wherever we go out of town, we sit at a keyboard or a pre organ. They hey, love the Detroit sound. Oh, it's a sound. I oh, yeah. When I went to California in five years, they came to Mount Mariah to hear me play uh, from Detroit. Something about the Detroit sound that we, we can't explain it. It's just in us. It's ingrained in us, the sound that we have. How we sit down, we approach the keyboard, the organ, how we set it up. Uh, I listened to Alfred, watch Herbert, watch Tommy, watch Woods. Y'all yeah, were a part of that, man. Y'all you know, were a part that, of that. that Thank y'all. That, that, yeah. that, that sound that we have, Chicago don't have it. No one has it. It's something about the Detroit sound that when we sit, it commands people's attention because yeah. it's not yeah. like it's, it's something that we the God has ingrained in all of us that's on this line that when we sit at the keyboard, they know we're not from their city. They come, they come back and like, well, that must be Detroit. And I think God, whatever God has done with Detroit musician, give us that sound wherever we go. I, you from Detroit, we can tell that's the Detroit sound. That's the Detroit sound. Mm -hmm. My godfather passed away, loved Detroit sound. He loved it. I mean, my God. And when I stayed in California, he'll come, how you do this? I don't know. I was just out there and I was calling back home, listening to stuff, bringing Detroit stuff to them. Uh, so God has been good to us, yeah. all the musicians here in Detroit. And yeah, I, I want to give a shout out, uh, Pastor Stanfield, Quinny Lennox is on. Ah, Calvin B. Rome, Pastor Rome in oh, L.A. Wow. Bless you, man. Amen. Robert Ventura, Raymond Hidden in Akron, Ohio. Oh, my God. They coming on Wilma, Wilma Harris and uh, uh, Be Loved and Logged In. <laughs> Love. They're right. crazy. Be love. Say we look like the Hollywood Squares. <laughs> <laughs> Be love. I'm gonna get you, man. Classic <laughs> man. Bless you, man. We see you on the keynote magazine. Thank you for joining, <laughs> Crystal Bailey. Bless you, my girl. Uh, sure. Over there, at Low Max. Uh, Antoine Webb. Antoine. Pastor, Pastor R. Patrick Johnson. The Whoa. preaching machine oh, over man. at Greater Burnett. Bless you, Pastor, for logging in. So many of you, I, I, I couldn't get call everybody we were talking, but we certainly appreciate you. And this will be on YouTube. It'll be up. You can go back and look at it again. And we are going to do this again. And we want to include some of our other fellow musicians and uh, singers. I'm The Lord just gave me this. I'm starting this thing, Spotlight on Music. And then this is my story. Now, next month, let me prepare you. Y'all clear your schedule. Father's Day, I'm, we're doing a very special tribute to the Craig brothers. And we're going to have the sun zone on Amen. Father's Day afternoon at 4 p.m. Charles Valley, Craig the fourth. And then, of course, Pastor James Lindsay, Craig Jr., yeah. They're gonna do they're gonna do special tribute in memory of the legendary Craig brothers on that day. And then I'm gonna Larry Whitfield, I see you. I'm reaching out to you too, Larry and David Whitfield, so we can uh they're doing something for uh Minister Whit Thomas Whitfield already, but it ain't like us doing it. 
You yeah, know, right. Because we we know some things. Hey, that's all I got to say. Yes. <laughs> you know, Tommy was our boy. We we traveled. I, I ain't gonna go into this because we got some stories to tell <laughs> about our fellowships <laughs> on Orange Lawn in Greenview. Yes, even Lord. starting on Princeton Street. We go yeah. way back. <laughs> yeah, on Princeton. Yes, sir. <laughs> and we just thank God. Listen, I'm gonna pray, and uh, I'm just gonna believe God. And uh, certainly, I want you all to uh, know how much I love you. When I was in the hospital, all all of you, all of you just surrounded me in prayer and love and checking on me and keeping up with me. And I'm doing good. I'm getting better. Amen. Still got, got a little ways to go, but I'm here thanking God every step of the way. He's been good to us. So I uh, thank all of you for joining us tonight. Philip Johnson, man, Rodney White, they still come in. They send in hearts. They send in thumbs up. And everything. Okay, I can't read no more, y'all. Anthony Thompson, I'm gonna get with you, man. I gotta get what you gotta finish up what we gotta do here. Blessings to you all. We're gonna pray and we got to get out of here. We can't come back till we leave. So we got to leave. <laughs> so, let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for this awesome fellowship. We thank you for thank the you. gifts and the anointing in these great men of God. Thank you, we Jesus. thank you for the fathers. We thank you for the sons. We thank you thank for you. allowing us to speak on bridging the gap between generations. We thank you for how you've invested your Holy Spirit in us and given to all of us the gift of music. Thank you, Lord, for thank the you. melodies you've given us to pen and to write. Thank you for the anointing as we mount instruments to play for your glory. Oh, yes, and we God. thank you, God, for the experiences and even the influence that you've given us with our lives and our music. Now, I pray a special prayer on Byron, special anointing on Roosevelt, special anointing on Chris. Yes, God. Bless these brothers tonight, God. Help them to see and go beyond where we have gone, God. Let the greater be before them, we pray, in the name of the Lord Jesus Lord, Christ. Lord. We ask you, God, to touch their minds. Give them creativity. Oh, God, bless them in the night season that they'll be able to write from their heart, God, as you inspire them. We pray for your anointing to be fresh. Each and every time they sit at the instrument to play, Zion yes, song. Yes, and then we thank you, God, for Dr. Troy. We thank you for Pastor Stanfield. We thank yes. you for their lives, God, yes, and Lord. all that they mean to us and the body of Christ. We pray, God, mm -hmm. that you continue to use us, yes, oh Lord. God, as instruments of your Amen. glory. Amen. Bless Amen. our music ministry. Bless yes, our Amen. ministry of the preach word. Yes. Oh God, give us as far as we can see. Yes, we Lord. thank you for good health. Thank we you, thank Jesus. you for provision, thank you, God. Thank you, we thank you for touching our bodies, healing us, delivering us from all sickness and disease. Uh, and we pray, God, that even in the midst of this pandemic, we shall witness restoration and blessings. Yes, You're yes. going to bless us whatever time we've lost during this pandemic. Thank you that we're going to redeem the time. And mm. we bless you, God, for what you're going to do in us, with us, and through us. And we'll be so careful to give your, your name, glory, honor, and praise. Amen. It's in the master's name of Jesus, yes, who Jesus. died, who he who rose and returned again. It's in his name we pray. Amen and thank Amen. God. Amen. Thank God. Well, brothers, I thank you. I love you all. Like and God. we'll do it again. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. I command the blessings of the Lord to overtake you. We receive it. That's my prayer. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.